Quick little audio test because I always get the microphone mucked up. Hey, how's it going? Today we've got a super fun piece on. We are doing a Michael Myers and Ghostface. That's it. Um, so this video I wanted to go through my process a little bit more. Um, I've had a comment asking to see my process a little bit. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a bit more of a vloggy type style like usual, but yeah, we'll capture some um, some more techniques and the way I sort of tattoo things from start to finish. And yeah, let's, um, let's get over to the studio and see what's good. So yeah, as I said, we are doing Ghostface and Michael Myers today. Um, it's only like quarter past seven. As, as always, I like to get in nice and early to set everything up. My client is coming in at 9 today instead of 10, so hopefully we can get a little bit more done, or at least get that extra hour in. Um, so yeah, let's get to the studio and set everything up. Bloody freezing in here, gotta get the heater on. Thirty. All right, so this is what we're tattooing today. It's gonna be sick. Get all these little details in the knife and whatnot. Yep, let's get to stenciling now. This one's also on one of my regular clients named Ali. She got the Pennywise piece last time as well. So only a week ago as well. So that should be fun to see how it's all healed up. Tom just came in and ran away. Tom, did you run away because I was talking to the camera? Hey? Did you run away because I was talking to the camera? No, I was just gonna give you a second. <laughs> no, you're all good. If I'm in the background. No, you're fine. Cool. Just trying to get the, the courage to actually speak on camera. Yeah, dude, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> There's a stencil all done. Nice and simple. So now we wait for the client and then we'll stick it on and get it going. How you feeling? Oh, sorry, yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah. How's it looking? Oh, it's all peely. Yeah, it's really cool. itchy now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Mainly in the dark spots, I think. Yeah. <laughs> is it all like, is it been through the peeling state or is it just um, started? It's just starting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like sweet. All right, uh, you can yeah. jump up when yeah. you're ready. So just laying on your back, but then just turn your leg out. It's a bit of an awkward one, this yeah. one. Is there any pain or anything in the other one still? Or? No, but it was actually swollen for a couple of days. And when I oh, stood really? up, it was like throbbing back. Yeah. I've never had that before. So yeah. Like, Damn. I'm surprised you didn't have it with the back of the thigh. Yeah, I didn't have it. Mm. Yeah, right. Okay, hello. So I tried to record while I was tattooing, but there was just too much background noise going on. So I'm just doing a voiceover. Hopefully I can explain everything properly. Let me know what you think in the comments. So first things first, after I've given the skin a good clean, I'm just laying out the design so I can make sure the size is right. But I actually forgot to stencil it up. So once I figure out the right size, I'm gonna go and stencil it up. I think that'll be a good size, eh? Yeah. Sort of matches up with the other one. Closes that gap a little bit more. Yeah. What do you think? Because his arm or hand will yeah. just sort of tuck in with the other one. Yeah. Is that too big? I don't think so. Because the only other thing I was going to get was the Freddy Claw anyway. Yeah, and that'll, that'll still fit on the back. 
And I think I'd rather it bigger instead of like more filler around it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that'll be cool. Yeah. Alright, well, I'll have to stencil that up then. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we'll try that again. So now that we've got our size all sorted and our stencil ready to go, I'm just going to prep the skin with some stencil anchored. Um, I prefer this stuff over most other brands. I just find it dries quite quickly in comparison and it gives a nice um, stick to the stencil. I'm not saying that other stencil products are bad, but I just prefer this one. Okay, so I've actually put a bit too much on, so I'm just going to dab off the excess, stick my stencil straight on. So now we've got the stencil stuck on, um, I'm just checking the positioning. I like where Ghostface is sitting, I like where Michael's sitting. Um, I wouldn't want to move it any further back, otherwise Ghostface's head will start to warp into the back of the knee, which is obviously what we don't want because then his head will look warped. So once I have my client go and check it out, make sure she's happy with where it sits, then we will get straight into it. So usually I will go through first and sort of use my round shader or liner to line out the hands first. But for this piece, I'm going straight in with my 13 curve mag and I'm just gonna block in the black areas first. So then I can get an idea of how dark I need to go for the actual fingers. I'm also running my machine on about 6.0 volts and my stroke on 4.2. I'm using the Amala Grand machine. This is probably my favorite machine that I've ever used. I was using the FKI in Flux, but I just found it just hit too hard in comparison. Whereas even though this one is a 4.2 stroke as well, it just doesn't make the skin as irritated. So for the solid black areas, I'm just sort of doing a slow, um, more of an oval sort of movement rather than tiny little circles. I just find it helps overlap the um, holidays. Holidays are basically empty spots in between the needles. For the tighter details, like blood drips, I'm just using a nine round shader to block all those in. Just so I can make them a bit sharper than if I was to use a mag, it would just come out a bit too soft looking. And then I'll go back through with a mag um, just to create that drop shadow underneath the chin. Usually for areas like the chin and oh, the jawline, I would usually use a mag to sort of feather in that um, the transition from his neck to his jaw but because this piece is quite high contrast I want to make that jaw pretty sharp um, especially because he's got a lot of like blood and stuff on his face there I want to just make them more identifiable so I'll just speed this part up just because I'm just blocking in all the black areas first and then I'll come back through with my mid-tone um, also using a nine round shader just to create those little like stippling patterns throughout the mask. We don't want it like overly smooth uh, because it is quite textured. So I really want to capture that look. So here I am using my mid tones, which is about five drops black and then the rest of the cap filled with white. Um, I do more of an opaque grey method rather than a wash. I just prefer the end result a lot better. Um, I find that it actually heals a lot better as well than grey wash. Um, with grey wash you get a lot more desaturation whereas opaques somewhat stay a bit more true to the actual tones. Because you'll, you'll actually see that I'm actually putting a bit of pressure while I'm tattling. I'm not just sort of feathering it in. So now I'll switch to a seven round shader by Mast. I wasn't a big fan of a lot of their needles, but I've actually found this seven round shader to be pretty good. So now I'm back using my nine round shader for the eyes and the nose area, also the mouth 
Areas that are a bit more sharp, um, I would tend to use a nine round shader. Um, sometimes I'll go through with a mag and block it all in first and then come back with my nine round shader to tighten everything up a bit more. My tattooing method is a bit all over the place. I don't usually start with my dark tones first and then sort of fade it all out from there. I sort of do it all as I go, which can be quite hard to explain how I actually tattoo, but this way just works for me. Um, I will usually go through certain areas with my darks first, then I'll sort of do a mid to light tone, but then I will also leave certain areas a bit open at first let it settle for a little bit and then I will come back through with a mid to light tone just to soften some areas out a bit. With a piece like this though, because it is quite high contrast, I don't tend to do a whole lot of light tones because it's very sharp. The light reflection is very bright on one side. So there's a lot of shadows and then yeah, you get the idea. So now that I've got a lot of my heavier shades in there, I'm gonna go through with my nine round shader again, but I'm using more of a mid to light tone and I'm doing more of a stippling, sort of like a, um, sort of like a scribble technique almost. Um, and I'm just trying to sort of feather them in just so I don't overdo it. So to create the separation between the two knives, ghost faces one, I'm going to be doing my lightest tone which is only a single drop of black. And then Michael Myers' knife, I've obviously done a higher contrast on it so that should stand apart from it. Especially because ghost faces is going to be mostly negative. So now we'll just do a little time lapse bit of the hand here um, because it's mainly in black, it's, there's not a whole lot of definition going on with this part. So with Ghostface, I'm going to be using mainly light tones, light to mid tones for a lot of the mask because his mask is obviously white. Um, so I'm just going to keep that quite soft. For this area in general, I want to be super gentle because it is coming towards the back of the knee, which is a super sensitive area. The irritation is just crazy on this thing. So I want to be super gentle, but I also want to move fairly quickly so I'm not irritating the skin too much. Again, with Ghostface's eyes, nose and mouth, I'm using a nine round shader to block it all in. And then I'll go through with a big mag. Um, I think it's a 23 or 27 maybe in the T-Tech. 
because I usually use the Cheyenne 19 curved mag or soft edge mags which I really like but I ran out of them so I'm going to be using the T-Tech and surprisingly they're actually really good. So sorry I'm just rambling on about different needles instead of actually telling you what I'm doing so let's get back to that. As I said, using my 9 round shader to block in the eye sockets and actually feather away from the lines, then I'm going back over the top with my mag so I can make it all as solid as possible. Also when doing solid black, don't be afraid to hang your needles out a little bit further than you normally would. The skin can actually take quite a lot of trauma before you end up tearing the skin. So as long as you've got a consistent hand movement um, and speed, your voltage are nice and low then you can actually go over it quite a bit before you cause any damage when i'm doing the white highlights i'll use a seven round shader and drop my volts to around 5.0 and then i'll drop my hand speed right down so i can take my time and get it in there properly and then for bigger areas of white, I'm just going to be doing more or less like the scribble technique, just so it's not all solid so I can still keep those textures even when I'm doing the white. Once I'm finished with the white, I will give the skin a good clean down with some blue soap and then I'll let it sit for maybe 5-10 to 10 minutes just so I can let the skin settle a little bit more and allow all the blood to come out through the white before I get my photos and everything. After I clean it as well, I'll also put some Bactine or the Hush Numbing Gel on there because that actually helps a lot with irritation. So that's the tattoo all finished up. I just spat everywhere. Anyway, that's the tattoo all finished. The tattoo ended up taking about six hours to finish. I'm absolutely wrapped with it. Uh, I know that was a tough spot for my client. But yeah, so I, I wanted to actually record or record my audio while I was tattooing, but there was just too much background noise so I couldn't capture it. So hopefully I explained everything in my voiceover. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there, if I'm missing anything or if there's anything specifically you want to know about. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Give this video a like as well. Follow me on my other social platforms. With that being said, I will see you next time. Peace.